Hi everyone! Um, it's been a while since we've posted and that's because we've been busy with work and family and friends and, and also our latest project has been updating our batteries and getting a battery monitoring system installed as well as adding two solar panels to the Wandermeyers family. We went with two 6 volt VMAX 225 amp hour batteries. So we ended up finding really great reviews on these VMAX batteries. We've been using them now for almost six months and we cannot complain. We ran those two six volts in series, which gives you 12 volts. When you run in series, it increases your voltage. So you add the voltage together. So we did the two six volt batteries to get to our 12 volts, what we needed for our Airstream. The batteries themselves had 225 amp hours. So when you go in series, you do not add the amp hours together. So both are 225, so that does not mean that we had 450 amp hours working. As I mentioned, 225 amp hours, so that means we have 112 and a half, you can count the halves, so 112 amp hours that we are now working with. So here are our two Renogy solar panels. I will bring you around to the back and show you our very fancy portable setup here. So each of these solar panels have two wires that come out and one is positive and one is negative. And with the solar kit came these branch connectors. So the branch connectors take two of the like wires, so positive, positive, or negative, negative, and you click it into one from each panel. And then you want to make sure that you keep track of which wire you have. There are no labels on this wire down below, so I have put labels on myself to make sure I remember what is positive, what is negative. So these two branch connectors basically just turn two wires into one, and that wire runs up to the charge controller, which is right here. So you can see that the wires from the positive and the negative are running into this charge controller right where it shows the panel. There's a hole that you slip the bare wire through and then you just tighten up that screw. It's a Phillips head. Now this is the part that I had to purchase and make sure that you have the right gauge, but this is the positive and negative that run to the ZAMP plug-in. So coming around to the other side, the cable comes down and has an SAE connection. Most SAEs are the reverse polarity from the ZAMP. So we actually have an attachment that changes the polarity. So it looks like the exact same tip, but it's a reverse polarity of the SAE to SAE. Just plug it in and it's good to go. There isn't any kind of setup to the charge controller. There's no buttons you need to push. You wanna make sure that you're seeing the two green lights, that means the solar panels are bringing in energy, and that means that the battery is receiving the electricity. It's right now blinking because our battery's at 100% capacity, so when it hits that mark, that's what the controller does, is it shuts off the energy flowing into the battery, protects your batteries from getting overcharged. I unplugged the charge controller, and as you can see right now, we've got a green light and we got a red light. And that red light is showing you that there's some error with connecting to the battery. So as you saw earlier when I had it connected it was green, so now it's red. That's a good way to troubleshoot where you might be having any issues with your charge controller. So let's take a look inside on the batteries. You can tell how we have the batteries in series, not in parallel. If they're in parallel you have wiring running negative, negative, positive, positive. So this is how we made it work. It fits, I ended up putting in a piece of wood down below, and that is just to prevent slippage of the batteries within the box because they are just shy of the sides, and I didn't want any kind of extra pressure being pulled on the cables. So I installed the battery monitoring system right here. Um, I actually had to go underneath and drill in from the outside inside to get this installed here. But given the very small space to be able to work within, um, that was the best placing that I could find. So our battery box actually has a hole that we can bring the Cat5 cable out. And although we installed the shunt in the battery box, we installed the cable and we've run it into our front bay. Um, I just used a cup drill and I drilled out that hole to be able to install it. It's just a few screws. 
you can open the Victron Connect app, which is free to download. Um, and after you've already set up, you should already see your system right here. So you just click on it. And it just takes a minute to connect. And then you can see what your state of charge is. You can tell your voltage. You can also see, you know, what your current status is. Play around with that power and it really helps you kind of dial in on saving electricity. All right, so finally, I just want to show you what it takes to clean off your solar panels. It doesn't take much, so I just need to kind of brush it off. So I have just a dry microfiber towel that I'm going to use to clean off these solar panels. And that'll help with the efficiency of the solar panel. So there you go, that's what we did to upgrade our batteries, install the monitoring system, and add 200 watts of solar panel portably to our Airstream without doing any kind of modifications. I hope this was informative. If you guys liked it, um, click like. If you want to see a video on something, please comment below. I am more than willing to do a how-to on certain topics. If you want to keep up with us, click on the bell below. It'll send you a notification when we post as well as if you're not subscribed, we really want you guys to come along with us on our journey and to be involved. Until next time, bye.